Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at three portable telescopes that were used for what's called Hoshino Expedition Photography. Back in the 1970s in Japan, many people did not own cars and they lived in cities where there were a lot of bright lights. And they were very interested in doing Hoshino photography, star photography. Usually that would be a piggyback camera mounted on a telescope, an equatorial mount because you were using film. So you had to track for 15, 20 minutes to get any kind of decent shot. Anyway, the idea was that you would take a small telescope on an equatorial mount, put a camera on the back, take it away from the city lights. Um, many people in Japan did not have cars, so they would take a bus or a train or uh, a motorcycle, and, or even carry it on their back, and take the telescope, camera, and the whole outfit, uh, away from the city lights to do their photography. That's what these scopes are all about. In order we have the Takahashi TS65P. This scope came along in 1972. It was revolutionary. Uh, it was, according to Takahashi, the first telescope with a built-in polar finder and uh, that was a big deal because the built-in polar finder all three of these have one of those. The built-in polar finder allows you to polar align the scope uh, very quickly and very easily. So it's a very nice innovation. That came along in 1972. In about 1980, we have the Vixen SA-70S. This is a 70 millimeter triplet semi-apple. This is a 65 millimeter triplet semi-apple. So you can see that Vixen was clearly kind of imitating uh, the Takahashi. Then in 1985, Pentax comes along with this. Now Pentax was very, very into photography and they designed a scope that was built for this Hoshino expedition photography, um, but they also made it a special photographic instrument. This is an ED, doublet ED lens and in the back, they have a special field flattener for photography that allows you to have nice, large fields with pinpoint stars clear across the field. That's a big deal with this one. So the Pentax is a slightly different wrinkle, but basically it's the same game. Very portable. All of these come with uh, kind of a suitcase little package that you can carry it out to the dark sky site. TS-65P type comes in at 34 pounds. The Vixen SA-70 comes in at 37 pounds, and the Pentax is a hefty 40 pounds, but it's a bit more convenient because it has a shoulder bag to carry the legs, so it's not quite as bad as it might seem. The best finder of the lot was the Pentax. It's only a six by 30, but boy, I don't know how they put special quality in there. Uh, it's a very nice finder. Comparable to a Takahashi, I would say. Really, really nice. Um, this is a very ordinary 6x30 finder on the Vixen. It's okay, but not great. Uh, the Tak is a superb finder, but it's only a 5x24, so it's a little bit small. The other night, I took all three of these scopes out, set them up in the backyard for a little shootout to see which ones were better and worse and so forth. And I found them to be... Uh, very, very nearly equivalent in many respects. Setup on all three of them was about the same. So there is not too much difference there. Um, so the portability factor is about the same with each of them. This one's a little bit lighter. If I was gonna go out for an expedition, I might prefer this one, especially if I'm doing piggyback photography. This one's a lighter package and it'll do just as well as any of these others for piggyback photography. Um, however, for observation plus piggyback photography, I think I would prefer this one. This has 75 millimeters aperture. And that 10 millimeters may not sound like much, but it makes a difference when you're observing things. I was looking at Saturn. The TS-65P delivered a beautiful, nice, crisp image. Really, really nice. But uh, the Pentax 75 with its 10, uh, 10 millimeters more aperture really did deliver just a little bit better image. Uh, it was noticeably improved over this one. Uh, the difference between this one and either of these two is not much. The five millimeters is really hard to see, but you can see the 10 millimeter difference. All three of them had nice crisp images. 
uh, at least for visual use. I suspect that the Pentax will do a much better job with photography through the main telescope. All three of them were pretty easy to uh, give a, at least a rough polar alignment. And for uh, Bushino astrophotography, for piggyback astrophotography, you're only going to need a rough polar alignment. It doesn't have to be real precise. All three polar alignment scopes work pretty well. Uh, I would say that of the three, the one that's the, the least effective is probably this one. Polar alignment scope is set up as an afterthought. It works fine, but it's sticking out, projecting. It's just a little bit awkward. It's uh, much more integrated with the TS-65P and the uh, Pentec. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these three portable Hoshino telescopes from the 70s and the 1980s. Thank you very much for watching.